Hey guys, Gilbert Hernandez here, Promar Ahi USA. And today I'm super excited to be at the shop that I fished for for many years, going on 13 years now, Pure Water Sports. And today we have the, the exciting opportunity to get out on the water with a bunch of folks and go lobster hoop and then to show you guys exactly how to hoop out of a kayak. Before we get into that, let's talk about the safety aspects. Let's talk about the regulations of what we're gonna actually need to do to get on the water, to, to be legit, to make sure that if we get approached by a game warden that um, we're safe for the night. Let's talk about radios, okay? Radio communication is super important. This radio here floats, okay? A radio is not any good if you flip over and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. So make sure you have radio communication. You can radio a group of friends. I always tell people in my seminars, it's always great to go out with a bunch of folks out in the water, never by yourself, because things can happen at all times, or at least if you do go out by yourself, make sure you have a game plan. A game plan is the most important thing. And we've talked about that in our other one-on-one -on -one videos, is having a game plan. Letting a loved one know where you're going at all times so they can track you. Let them know what time you plan on getting home, what time you're leaving, what time you're gonna leave the dock. Those kind of things are gonna help your family, your friends know where you're at all times. Also, Light sticks. Light sticks are super important. These are the Promar light sticks here. And as you can see throughout this shop, we have a slew of tackle that we can sell you guys. But light sticks are super important, not just to mark your float for you, but to mark your float for boaters around you so that where they're coming in the area where you're hooping, they know where your hoop nets are at all times. We don't want to get a net stuck in a prop or some guy's driving down maybe a little too fast and runs over your net. Things get a little hairy out there. And a light stick is the best way to mark your structure, your, your net to let them know you're hooping that specific area. I also like to use like flashers, guys. This is like a one that you put on a, a bike or something or when you're running. Uh, put this on the back of my seat just to let boaters know around me that I'm there so they don't run into me at night. Just an extra safety aspect of the night. Now let's talk about life jackets. Life jackets are super important. I highly recommend to wear a life jacket at all times. You never know when an accident's gonna happen. You never know when you're gonna flip. You never know when uh, there may be some type of emergency that may occur and next thing you know, you're in the water. There's no time to put a life jacket on. We wanna make sure we have a life jacket on at all times protecting itself so we get home to our loved ones safely. Now let's talk about regulations, guys. Regulations, we have a slew of videos on regulations. In our 101 video, we talked about lobster cards and gauges and all these things that make us legit go IDs, okay? But let's, let's refresh ourselves on these regulations. Remember, to go lobster hooping, you need to have a lobster card, okay? A lobster card is super important. Now that's on the top of your lobster card, um, you'll have your Go ID number. Now the Go ID number is super important because that Go ID number goes on your float, okay? Goes on your float. I have a float right here. Brand new float, Go ID number. Now we are ready to hoop with this buoy. Um, our Go ID number is on it. Also, regulation wise, we gotta have every angler, every kayak guy hooping needs to have a gauge, guys. Everybody participating in lobster hooping needs to have a gauge. So remember, gauge, lobster card, and Go ID number. That'll get you legit to get on the water. You're in your regulations, all your safety gear that you need, and we're ready to lobster hoop. But now let's talk about the most important thing, guys, the actual kayak itself. Now the kayak in front of me is the one of the newest, latest and greatest kayaks. This is the Hobie Pro Angler 360. Now this boat has changed the market in several ways of kayak fishing. For me, myself, I paddled for many years and until I got into a, a, a Hobie Pro Angler that really changed the way I lobster hoop and fish in the bays, fish in lakes. And today I wanna to kind of dive deep down inside of these boats to figure out the pluses of this boat. Like what are the storage areas? What are the accessories that can do? So, um, so many things you can do with this kayak and for that, I want to bring my good friend, Tim Boyer on. How are you doing? Ah, good, good to see you, Tim. Good to see you. So today, Tim, we have uh, several boats, of course, that we sell in our yeah. shop. Um, you can see there's several models around this. Gosh, this is the boat that it seems like everybody wants. But kind of just walk us through the boat from the front to the back. Let us know the accessories that we sell in the store and how people yeah. can kind of rig their kayaks out. Okay. If you're not familiar with Hobie kayaks, it's unique in the world. It's, it uses a pedal drive system. This is the 360 drive from Hobie. All of the drives use fins that flex as they go side to side. That's the motion that you're gonna be using. If you do run into something, these are gonna flip, flip up and flip back down. 
Uh, you've got the ability to adjust for leg length and you've got an indicator of what direction you're going to go when you start pedaling. So unique to this is you can steer this lower unit with one of the steering handles. Okay, drop it back down, locks in place. Uh, and this is how you steer the drive. So uh, like all Hobie kayaks, there's a rudder system. You steer with either one of the handles for the rudder system. Uh, you've got a very large hatch in the front and that's unique to the Hobie 14s. Uh, and it's a great place to put your lobster. In particular, on the Pro Angler, you've got a couple of features that are really important to fishermen. You've got rod storage right here. There's a rod tube that, that you put the tip of the rod in, and there's a little rack that goes on here that you hold the, the rest of the rod in. So, so the Kaya comes with a couple tackle trays that you can put your tackle in. There's also, like Gilbert mentioned, there's a tub that goes in there that you can throw all kinds of loose stuff. And what I do is I'll, I'll take these and put them under the seat, put the tub in there, and I can store lots and lots of tackle with me. Especially when hooping, uh, I'll, I'll put my, my sticks in there, my light sticks in there, I'll put the gauge in there, I'll put my headlamp in there, I'll put my gloves in there before I go out and then use it as I go. People buy kayaks in general throughout the market, but, but why why a Hobie kayak and specifically, why a Pro Angler or a Pro Angler 360? First of all, for stability, this is a very wide kayak. And typically, if you're paddling a kayak, you don't want it wide because then you can't paddle it. But with the unique Mirage Drive that Hobie builds and makes, you can go much faster than you can ever paddle and your hands free. And maneuverability is incredible, especially with the 360. It allows you to steer and very precisely move in any direction you want to go. Mm. Uh, 360, that's why it's called 360. So you can, you can get more speed, more maneuverability, and more comfort out of a Hobie kayak than anything else. You can, I, we can't see the seat, but it's super comfortable. If you're going to be out there for four, five, six, eight hours, you want to have a very, very comfortable seat. What are uh, the maintenances on some of this? Well, some of the features, all the, all the hardware on this kayak is stainless steel. So using it in salt water is not going to be an effect. The maintenance is basically hose it off really good. Yes. Uh, all the steering lines use a Spectre line that's rated for 700 pounds. They're super strong, uh, very abrasion resistant. And then on the drive itself, again, you want to you want to really rinse it off good. And then once a month or so, just kind of spray the center area with some silicone spray. Don't use an oil-based one because that's going to attract dirt and uh, make it wear out more. So the beauty of these kayaks, Sam, is that, and especially in California here, we're, we are struggling with gas prices, right? $7 gas. $7 gas, man. There is no gas in this. Um, you can basically go off any beach, any dock, that's, right? That's the beauty. You can launch anywhere. You don't have to go through a harbor. Yeah. Uh, and you can get in with, especially with the maneuverability, you can get into really tight to some areas, uh, particularly if there's a little rock pile you want to fish. Uh, or you want a hoop net on, you can very precisely get exactly where you want to be, unlike a boater that's not going to get into and, and worry about a little rock. We got no gas, we got no registration, you can store it on the side of your yard. No if you buy a kayak from us, you can store it here. Yep. I mean, things keep getting better and better and better. And so today we are excited, guys, to share with you guys how these boats work. We're going to put them into action. We have a lot of folks coming out today. We're going to get some live footage, some lobsters on this kayak and to show you guys how easy it is to get on one of these kayaks and to hoop lobster. Come visit us at Pure Water Sports. We have so much to offer. Tim, thanks so much Thank for your you time and sharing. Pleasure. It's Thank a you. beautiful boat with us. All right, guys, now that we've gone over the kayak and the kayak accessories, let's talk about the gear that we're going to be using tonight for our lobster hooping session. Let's talk about the nets. Promar offers four types of hoop nets, but the nets we're going to be using tonight are the 32 Ambush and the 36 XL. Now, depending on what your kayak's like or what you feel or what's comfortable for you, it depends on what you want. Some guys like the 32, like a smaller hoop net. Some guys like more volume with the 36, depending if you're on a Prangler or a bigger boat. You know, but some guys are just on a paddle kayak and maybe it's not as maneuverable or maybe it's not as stable. They might want to go with the 32 because when they're going side to side, it may, may not be as stable as some of the uh, Hobie products that we have. But whether you're using the 32 or the 36, they're both great hoop nets and they both get the job 
job done. Let's talk about the float, okay? Every hoop net's gonna need a float. Now, as we talked about in our prior videos, which you can see on YouTube, our YouTube channel, or come visit us at Promar Ahi USA, is that this float is brand new. It needs to be drilled out, it needs to be uh, counterbalanced with a light stick, and we talk about that in all of our videos. Speaking of the light stick, the light stick is something that we need, as we talked about today, it keeps us safe, boaters safe, and marks our float. Then we're gonna need 75 feet of rope, guys. Um, usually in a kayak, we're not hooping any more than 75 feet. Um, usually anything over 75 feet, you start getting to 100 feet, 125 feet. That's when a puller gets involved. Um, but for this application, everything's gonna be pulled by hand. We're hoop most hoopers uh, in a kayak are hooping 25 to 45 feet of water. Today, we're gonna be in around that range, around 45 to 50 feet. And so 75 feet is plenty of rope for us. Now let's talk about bait cages. The Promar Seal Proof Bait Cage. This has totally changed the market. Seals get totally frustrated with it. This one also has a screw on lid. Um, putting bait in here is very easy. What I like to do, which I talk later in one of our videos, is that I like to mill prep everything. I like to not just take five out, seven or eight out. Two of these fit perfectly in a one gallon uh, Ziploc bag. I like to marinate my bait, which I talked about, I'm gonna talk about later in our video. I like to marinate my bait um, overnight in Bidon spray or Bidon juice. Um, I even like to put some um, Bidon cloths in here as well to give it an extra scent. Now, um, these bait cages are super important because this is what the lobsters get attracted to, but having extra bait cages on hand are super important for you guys. And all of it's gonna come nicely together and it's gonna look something like this. You're gonna have your float, which we talked about in a video before, how to drill it out. Visit our website at Promarahi USA, our YouTube channel, how to drill it out, the Go ID number, the number system, which we talk about, the reflective tape, the rope, which is zip tied off every five to 10 feet, the, the uh, extension cord winder and the locking system with the cleat on there as well, the 990 pound cleat um, to hook your kayak uh, net up. So that way you can keep your gear separate. So this is some of the gear that we're gonna be using. And the best part about it guys is we're getting ready to go outside now. We're gonna go on the dock. We're gonna get our kayak ready. We're gonna put our kayak in the water and we're gonna deploy our kayak and we're gonna catch some bugs. So come out with us right now on the dock as we do that. Hey guys, welcome to the dock here at Pure Water Sports. Now we're gonna talk about safely putting our kayak into the water. In our situation here today, we are super blessed to have our own dock space here at Pure Water Sports where we can launch our kayaks from. But most situations, guys, um, you may be on a beach, um, you may be right on the side of us here, we have a launch ramp, you might be in a launch ramp, every situation is gonna be different. So we're gonna address our situation today from a dock and how to put your kayak safely into the water. Um, like I said, we do not want to put any gear on the kayak right now. I don't want to put any gear in the kayak. In the past, I've done it and I've lost gear picking up your kayak, putting it into the water. You can lose your, your fins, you can use a powder, you can lose hoop nets, you can lose gear. Um, you never know what's gonna happen when you put that kayak in the water. So for me personally, I like to go as dry as I possibly can when I'm putting my kayak in the water. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you guys that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my kayak right now, nose first off the dock into the kayak and show you how easy it is. Light and easy, there's no gear on it. Just dip it into the boat just like that. Set it down nice and slowly. The boat's gonna come right to you. I have a cleat here, which is really cool. I'm just gonna attach my boat straight to that cleat and I'm ready to go. So now we got the boat safely in the water. Let's go over the steps on how to get you guys hooping for a night in a Hobie kayak. The first thing that I do is I like to get my pedals in. My pedal drive system is the most important part. It keeps me going. Make sure that the numbers are facing towards you, of course. We're gonna slip those in, lock them in place. My pedal drive is in. Now the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my nets on the boat. If you do not feel safe taking five nets, there's no need to take five nets. Five nets is the most nets that you can take on a kayak. On a boat, you can take 10. You may only want to take two or three. Today, for our, our, our shoot and to demonstrate to you guys, we're going to take five nets. Well, how do I stack those five nets? Well, what I'm going to do is my bottom number system, as we talked about the number system, number five is going to be at the bottom. So behind me here, I already pre-stacked my nets. So what we're going to do is we're going to take hoop net 
five and four and place them at the bottom. What we're trying to do is trying to nest our nets or stack our nets safely. So they're not leaning. Like I talked about, detachable rigging is super important. So we're gonna take five and four. This is number five and four hoop net. We're gonna put them right on the back. You see how nicely they set real nicely. Now we're gonna take three and two. So three and two, detachable rigging is important guys. They're gonna go right on the top here. And the last one of course is number one. Number one is gonna go on the top. Now number one goes on the top because that's the first hoop net you're gonna put out is number one. If you want, you can just put out five first or you can put out four first, but the best way to track your hoop nets is one through five. Because as you go out in the water and you start dropping your hoop nets, organization is so important, which we've talked about in all our videos. You can reference those videos, but this is actually on the water stuff. Number one is gonna be the first one. And the second thing I like to do, is I like to put my sabiki rod on. Um, and the cool thing about this is anytime that we are on a kayak, we want to dress to swim and rig to flip. So we have these leashes here at Pure Water Sports. You can buy them in our shop. Has a little hook on it. You can actually, de you can hook it to the kayak and then put it inside the boat. And the Pro Angler, we have really cool accessories where you can actually slip this rod right into the rod holder and set it down and just hook this right to the boat. That's why if something ever happens, you're not gonna lose your rigging. Now, the third thing I like to do is, guys, I wanna share with you, um, none of my bait is inside here right now. Um, I'm not a big fan of putting bait inside uh, hoop nets right away. I like to let my bait marinate a little bit, and let's talk about that, what I do. I am not a big fan of cutting bait on a kayak. I just think safety-wise, it's, it's kind of dangerous anytime you hold a knife. I pre-cut everything at home, and what I do is I marinate all my bait in bite on. Okay, bite on is one of the best things that's happened to me over the years. The bite on product, Tony and the guys have been super awesome to me as far as letting me be a part of this company. I usually marinate my whatever it's salmon heads or mackerel or sardines or whatever you're using for the night. I usually like to marinate it for a few days. And the beauty thing about the seal bait cages is two of them fit perfectly in a one gallon size bag, okay? So what I do is I marinate it all in the bag and then overnight, then I pack it. So I usually pack it with half of a cloth of bite on. So, so now they're getting double the scent. They're getting the bite on cloth with the bite on marinated meat. I put this in my uh, kayak and it is frozen. Okay, so I usually freeze it the night before so that it's not thawing out. So by the time I get on the water, it's thawed out and that juice is ready to release. I already have three seal bait cages um, inside my kayak now ready to put on the hoop net and release. But I just wanted to show you guys what I do is pack them this way. Then when I pull one off, the first hoop net off, what I'm doing is now I'm detaching it to my hoop net. I'm not seeping any juice around my kayak. Uh, if you guys know any type of mackerel juice or sardine juice or even bite on juice will stain your kayak, okay? And it's really tough to get out. But that's just exactly what I do. Make sure we have our life jacket on, which is important. I always put my life jacket right on my seat so that I can visually see it. When I'm coming down to the dock, I wanna make sure that I see my life jacket. And the most important thing, guys, before we push off this dock, is to have our lobster card, guys, which we talked about earlier. Make sure you have your lobster card on you and filled out. If you've been in any of my seminars before, or even our one-on-one -on -one video, we like to put our lobster card with a slew of pins, guys, a slew of pins inside this box. Because without a pen, you can do nothing. Make sure your pins work. Make sure your lobster card is filled out. Other than that, guys, make sure you have radio communication, a charged cell phone, a buddy to go out with, and we're ready for those lobsters. So guys, we just we just left the dock, and you know, typically when I go hooping um, at night, there's things that I check for. You know, weather is super important, tide is super important, which we talked in all our videos. If you've seen any of our videos, we talk about moon phases. Tonight we have an awesome moon, we have an awesome tide swing. So those are, these are the things that are going through my mind as I'm getting ready to go out hooping. Going out of the harbor, typically, um, I always like to, in my mind, just double check, you know, double check 
what do I have? Of course, most importantly, our lobster card is most important. I know I have that filled out. I know I have my bait. I know I have all these things, but just double check because once you get on the water and you get past the break wall, it's a little bit of a dog fight to get back in and then you're gonna miss that first crawl. You wanna make sure that you're dropping your nets. I typically like to drop my nets um, like a half hour or you know 40 minutes before the sun sets. And if you're out, no, if you're out past the break wall or wherever you're gonna hoop net, and it's at that time and you realize you forgot something, you're gonna miss that key time of that first crawl. It's gonna be a long night of pulling nets. So make sure that everything's adjusted because when you get past that break wall, it's game time and it's time on and it's time to work. All right, guys, now that I know where I'm gonna hoop net, I, I know it's in front of me, safety-wise. I know it's behind me. I know how far I am off the break wall to be safe. Remember, we don't wanna hoop too close to the break wall because we're gonna start getting all those critters. And plus, it's dangerous with a swallow pushing our boats in. But I'm, I'm referencing everything that I'm doing right now with my Navionics app with my fish finder so i can see it on my navionics app i can see the stones the small stones that i'm looking for or a certain stone that i want to hoop net and then i look at my fish finder with gps and i regular i realize yes this is the spot that i'm going to fish now remember guys it is daytime right now it is actually 10 44 and the reason why we're doing this video in the light is to demonstrate better for you guys so you can actually see what we're doing later on tonight we're going to get the action footage of us actually putting the gear to use but right now um just for you guys you folks at home we're going to show you guys in the light in the day of the light how we do this so that it makes more sense to you guys and um that way we don't want you to miss any aspect of the safety or the rigging so that's why we're doing what we're doing now so everything that we're going to be doing from here on out we're not going to have actual bait and bait cages we're going to we're going to put all the cages together we're going to put the nets together we're going to put the rigging together but everything's going to be more in a demo stage a simulating stage for you folks at home can see on a better state all right guys now we're ready for the fun part of the night. We're ready to drop our nets. The most exciting part of the night. Make sure to have a pair of gloves, right? Gloves. Now, super important about this, people always say, you know, what are the best gloves out there? You know, one thing that I tell people in my seminars is you're gonna get wet, okay? 110%, you're gonna get wet. There's mo it's pretty impossible to keep these gloves dry. Your hands are gonna be wet throughout the night. It's not like you're on a boat. The convenience is you're on a kayak, right? There's so many benefits of a kayak. No gas, no storage. You can store it in your backyard. So these are all the pluses. The downside of a boat sometimes is maybe you can't walk around it. It's like on a regular boat. Um, you might get wet more. I'm wearing full bibs right now. We're gonna be placing this net actually on our lap, um, which is wet. So we're gonna get wet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my hoop net. Now, it's super important to be stable. Okay, a lot of guys think they can get on a kayak. Like right now, I'm on the Hobie Prangler. I can actually stand up in this boat, okay? At night, I might have a different situation. There may be a swell or something, and I'm not gonna wanna stand up in this boat, okay? Actually, you're kinda crazy if you stand up in this boat, especially in the ocean. For lake purposes, we can stand up all day, fish, bass, do that kind of thing, but we don't wanna be doing this when we're throwing hoop nets, okay? We wanna make sure that we're stable. I see a lot of guys flip boats because what they do is they favor one side or the other, okay? When you're on a kayak, especially throwing a net, you gotta be plain on the boat. You gotta be pretty centered on the boat. Right now, all my stuff is behind me. This is super important, it's behind me. We wanna big, make sure to be able to twist behind, grab a net, and set it on our lap, okay? Just like this. Now, I can set that hoop net perfectly on my kayak just like this, okay? I can work with it this way. Now I can take out my rigging, right? What we talked about earlier, okay? The rigging is not attached, okay? I could take it out. Now I can attach it to my hoop net. Here's my carabiner, which you talked about earlier. Okay, we're gonna attach it. Okay, now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna look at my fish finder, okay? Now I know right now I'm in basically 25 feet of water, 20 feet of water. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna unwind this as we talked earlier. Okay, we're gonna unwind this and we're gonna un unwind uh, that 20 feet of rope. And maybe even like a half to adjust for the tide, let's say an incoming tide, and what we're gonna do is lock it in place. 
Then we're gonna grab our light sticks, our battery operated light sticks, okay? Make sure they work. These ones are perfect. I just changed out the batteries, okay? We're gonna shove it right in our holder here, okay? And we're just gonna set this aside, okay? Then I'm gonna grab my seal bait cage, okay? Seal bait cage. Remember, there's no bait in this. Tonight we're gonna bait them, but just to show you folks at home what we're gonna do, and we're gonna clip that in. Now, we have a video on this as well, how to, how to do this. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap this around, okay? And we're gonna snap it into the cable. And then we're gonna snap this side in, okay? A lot of guys, what they do is, they just take the seal bait cage and they just put it in, in, in the system, in the net, okay? Well, it's not designed for that. What we gotta do is we gotta get the slack out of the, uh, of the seal bait cage. And the way to do that is to wrap it around. We have a lot of people, a lot of folks at home that say, well, the seals are still getting in it. And the problem that they're having is they're not taking the slack out of the seal bait cage. So the way to do that is wrap it around the bottom ring, tie it off the cleat there, here, and now you're ready to go. So basically all we're doing right now is we have our rope, everything's ready to go, and we're just gonna safely toss it over. Now, I usually, what I do is, when I come in, is I have a, a lanyard. I always keep a lanyard on the boat. Um, I always have one tied off to the boat at all times, tied off to myself, and maybe two lobster gauges in my hatch. That way I know for a fact throughout the night, I always have a lobster gauge. Game wardens love seeing a lobster gauge around your neck because they know they don't have to ask for that. They can physically see it. So let's deploy this net, what we're doing, okay? We're gonna throw it away from the boat, okay? We're gonna start letting the slack out little by little, okay? It's gonna, it's gonna go down little by little. This is the cool thing about a kayak, guys. You can get right over the top of it, okay? Now I know I have a little bit of slack, okay? Well, I wanna get that slack out. I'm just gonna wind in one time. Cleat it off. Drop it in. All right, guys, we just deployed our first net right behind me here, or actually right in front of me here, okay? We have four other nets to deploy, okay? We're gonna repeat this process for those four other nets. Remember, you don't have to do five nets. If you feel comfortable doing two nets or three nets, you know, Fishing Game says that on a kayak, you can have five nets. If you don't feel comfortable doing five nets, please, by all means, don't do five nets. I've been doing this a long time, Five nets sometimes can still be a little booger for me. But as you go through night, we drop this first net here, okay? Now I gotta drop four more. Now you have to consider that throughout the night, you're gonna be getting bugs, you might have to rebate, there's gonna be things you're gonna have to do. I like to have a soak time of 20 to 25 minutes, sometimes 30, depending on the crawl. But remember, as you're cycling bait, as you're calling lobster, time is a factor. We drop this net around 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, so I'm gonna figure that I'm gonna have to be back at this net around 11.25, no later than 11.30, but I still have more nets to deploy, okay? So we gotta consider that. Remember, time is a factor when you're on a kayak. Make sure your, document, your documenting process is perfect, okay? Remember, the first time you drop your net, the last time you dropped your last net, remember to have that 25 to 30 minute cycle and it'll do best for you on the water. All right guys, we have all five nets deployed. We have them placed perfectly with our Fish Finder and Navionics app. Now what do we do in the meantime? What do we do? do we, uh, usually what I do is I like to snack on something, you know, kind of get situated, get my boat kind of figured out after throwing all my gear and kind of get my head in the, in the right space. Um, take off my wet gloves. First of all, I do it. I try to keep them as dry as possible and I can put them in a spot where I think they're gonna show you the best dried on my boat. What I love to do guys is to make some bait. Um, no better way to do it, the Ahi Sabiki Rod, the seven footer, meant for a kayak. It was almost like designed for a kayak. Of course, we have a rod leash on it. You can either leave, leave the rod leash on. I personally like to take it off. And what I like to do is we're using the uh, Sabikis from Promar, but we have to have, a must for me is this Glow Weight by Leadmasters. Just light it up with your headlamp or a flashlight, drop it down, look for those bait balls. Go up and down and start catching bait as the night goes on. I like doing this because you can bring extra bait on the boat with you, but sometimes it's always good to make bait for the next day, or maybe you want a fresher bait, you know? I love the bite on scent, which I talked about, and I love bringing the cloths on the boat. So I can still put a fresh bait in there and then back it up with a bite on cloth, and it, goes, it works perfect for me throughout that hoofing night. 
All right, guys, it's almost sunset as we talked before. All of our guys are out here right now. We have our light sticks on. Everybody has their life jackets on. Now's a good time. We're gonna start pulling in about 15 minutes. We're gonna get that 25 minute soak time, maybe even a 30 minute soak time. No more than 30 minutes today. Um, got my headlamp on my head. Got my gloves ready. And uh, we're ready to pull some nets in about 15, 20 minutes. So stay tuned. Hopefully we get them real good. And now it's time to pull our first net. As you can see, our net is, our buoy is right in front of us. Our net is right in front of us. So the question goes, um, how do we approach that net? Okay, how do we how do we pick up that net? Now, it's super important to know whether what the tide is doing. If it's an outgoing tide, the buoy is gonna be facing that way um, towards the ocean side. But right now, it's, it's, it's an incoming tide, so the buoy is actually facing towards the beach. We always want to pick up buoy end. So we're going to always pick up the buoy side first. We don't want to wrestle with the buoy. We want to try to get that net parallel. The beautiful thing about being on a kayak is as I pick up that buoy and put it in my boat, if the line is going towards the bow of my boat, I can actually pedal up to the boat with my pedals to get parallel over that net. Now we want to pull straight up. We don't want to pull to the side. We want to pull from this side because that's called tipping. And anytime you tip a net, if there are bugs in the net, they will fall out. You don't want to tip your net. You want to make sure to get right over the top of the net. And let's demonstrate how to do that right now. So as you're pedaling up to your buoy at a walking speed, say you're walking in the mall, walking with your family on a, on a pro angler system or a pedal drive system, you can, you can actually pedal up to three to five miles an hour. So that just gives you an idea of how fast these pedals can go. So you'd be, you wanna just really ease into it. Um, you wanna make sure to get up to this buoy as slow as possible there's no rush you want to make sure to bring the buoy right along the side of your boat and remember we want to get parallel with that buoy we don't want that buoy line to be at the bow of our boat or at the stern of the boat we want to get right over the top of that buoy so that we're pulling it it's straight up and down okay straight up and down so what we're gonna do is right here right along our buoy okay we're gonna walk it now okay we're gonna walk it we're gonna pedal I'm right over the top of my buoy now. We're gonna give it a quick tug. Sometimes these bugs are hanging on the top. We wanna to make sure if they are hanging on the top, poking in, we wanna knock them in. Okay, we don't knock those bugs in. And then we're just gonna pull this real slowly, not too fast, real slowly, okay? You might even feel some thumping in there. Thump, 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 thump. We're gonna take our head nap, we're gonna have our head. We're gonna peek inside there. Make sure that everything in there is just bugs, no eels, no sculpin, nothing like that. Take a quick inspection. We do not pull this net on our boat until we expect everything just like this. Once we see the net is clear, we pick up the net, we put it on the front here, and then the beautiful part, we start calling our lobster, measuring our lobster, which ones we want, throwing them out, which ones we're gonna keep, and we'll talk about that right now. Now we have the net on the kayak and we have a slew of lobster. Hopefully that's the way it's going for you guys. Let's just say we have six lobster now in the net and we can visually see that two of them are really short. They're tiny guys, right? What we're gonna do first is we're gonna pull all the lobster out that we know for a fact aren't measurable. We're gonna pull those lobster out and we're gonna throw them over, okay? We're gonna throw them over, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our gauge. Now remember, I always have a gauge around my neck. The gauge around my neck is to have on me at all times, but I always have a free gauge as well. And I usually leave it in the side pouch or something of my kayak where I can actually freely bring it around. The one on my neck, I can, can't move it out no more than this. What you wanna do is fishing game, what they're gonna require 
is you're gonna have to have a lobster gauge first and you're gonna measure from the carapace, which is this shell, to the front. Now, a lot of guys on social media, I see them, they're measuring from the, the, the front to the back. Where you wanna measure is, you wanna measure from the back to the front. And the reason why, as you can see there, I'm hitting the top horn. Now, if I was measuring from the back, okay, this buck could still be legal, but if those eyes move just a tad, so this slips over the front and those eyeballs move. You see those eyeballs move? That's a short lobster. What the fishing game is looking for, the reason why they measure from the back to the front is because you're, this could be legal, it can slide over the lobster, but the minute that slides down the front horn and those eyes move, that's a short lobster. But this lobster is legal, so we're gonna take it home. Let's keep getting some more, guys. Make sure to get all your lobster out. Keep the ones that you're gonna keep. Now let's talk about storage. The beautiful thing about um, the Hobie system, look out too, I can, I can stack this right on the back. The beautiful thing here about the Hobie Prangler system is I have this tub in the front, okay? Now this tub in the front is basically, I can have storage there, but this is where I'm putting my lobster at the end of the night, all my legal lobster, okay? Now why I put them in the front of the hatch there is because if I ever get, did get approached by fishing game, um, first of all, I have a lobster gauge around my neck, which they know that I'm legal. I'm able to pull my uh, lobster card out of the front of my hatch, um, which is here. And I usually store this one in the center of my hatch, but for her, just for showing you guys, that's where I put it. And then I have all my nets in the back with my Go ID, and I'm pretty legit that way. But if they approach me, which they have on the water, I can actually just flip up my lid, flip it up like this, and all my bugs are exposed there. I like at the end of the night to physically even pull my lobster out and count one through seven, right? Seven is illegal for lobsters. Seven lobsters is what you can have. Now remember this too, guys, it's very important. As you're calling out short lobster through the night, especially in a kayak, the smaller lobster, they tend to slip through the net. If you guys are veteran lobster guys, you'll know this, that the as you have the net on your lap here, the, the lobster will slip through, and what lobsters do is they move backwards, okay? So they're gonna start scooting back. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna scoot underneath your seat. At the end of the night, we always forget to check us kayakers to check underneath your seat. And that's where a lot of tickets come from, guys, throughout the years, is that those short lobster under your seat, the game warden is waiting for you on the beach or on the dock. You get out of your kayak thinking you're perfectly legal. You have all your legal lobsters in your front hatch. As you begin to get out, they look at your front hatch, they pick up your seat. Oh, there's Mr. Lobster, okay? So at the end of the night, guys, it's important, even as you cycle through your nets, and you throw out, the Prangler system is really good because you can be real mobile on it. I can be on my knees here. I can I can even stand, which I showed you guys earlier. You wanna make sure that you take your headlamp and you wanna make sure there's no lobsters in the crevices of your seat that might have tried to get away from you. All right, guys, this is our scenario setting. Remember, we're doing this for you guys in the daytime so that it makes more sense to you guys. Of course, we're gonna give you some action footage tonight. Well, let's talk about the night, the night is over for us right now. We have a legal limit of lobster, we have seven. We've counted all of our lobster, we've measured all of our lobster, we've checked under our seat. Now it's time to pack it up and go home and enjoy those lobsters. So how do we do that? What we're gonna do is it's pretty much the same way we put the nets on our boat. What I like to do though, for me personally, is I like to put the nets up here. I like to, remember, detach everything. I like to detach the rigging, make sure that all my cords are winded up, this is the beauty of this system. Remember guys, it's so awesome to just put it through the cleat there, wrap it around, put that aside. We're gonna take our light stick guys. And if I can encourage you guys is to have um, a box. Everything should have a box. Remember to turn your light sticks off, store it in a box, with the rest of the light sticks, okay? Put that aside. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bait, okay? We're gonna get our bait cage, detach it from the hoop net, okay? And remember guys, I like to do this because I don't like anything seeping out, okay? We're gonna take our, open our seal bait bait cage, we're gonna dump it over the side. What I'm doing is I'm gonna take my bait cages in and I'm just gonna put them right here on the side, okay? You want, you can even rinse them out with water, get all the extra juice out of them, knock them around, put them on the side, and then what I'm gonna do is put this net right back, grab this hoop net, remember not, it's gonna try to stick on everything, grab it, put it on the side, put it right behind you, and we're coming in safely.
So let's talk about coming in right now, how we're gonna come in. I have all my hoop nets on the back. What are we gonna do first? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my lobster card, tell my buddies, hey, we're done for the night. I'm gonna take my gloves off with dry hands. If you don't have a dry hand, make sure to have a towel on, on, on you, dry your hands off, grab your pen, grab your lobster card, document how many lobsters you have. Now, remember, if it was a tough night for you and you have zero lobsters, you gotta put zero, okay? If you come into the dock, you come into the beach area, and there's a game warden waiting for you, and he asks for your card, and you say, I didn't catch anything, and you leave that blank, that spot blank, you're gonna get a ticket, okay? After that, we, uh, we head in to the dock, and we hopefully see our friends, the fishing game wardens, and they're gonna, we're all gonna be legit. We're gonna have our lobster gauge around our neck. We're gonna have our legal lobster. We're gonna be all organized. Our light sticks are gonna be in our cases. Our lobster card's gonna be in a waterproof case. All of our bait is out, stored on the side. All of our nets are perfectly stacked. We shut the kayak from the front to the back for no short lobster, and we're ready to go, guys. All right, guys, as we're heading into the dock at night, remember, it's gonna be dark. We wanna make sure that things are safe around us. We wanna come in at a slow speed. The same way we kinda of pick up a lobster buoy is the same way we wanna come in, okay? We don't wanna come in too fast. We definitely don't wanna come in too slow. Usually at night, there's probably other anglers around you, so we wanna make sure that we're friendly at the dock and that we take our time to get on the dock. We're just gonna come in real gently. We're gonna turn our boat. We're gonna grab onto the dock just like this. And remember guys, we always gotta keep our balance on this kayak. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to keep our balance and we're just gonna gently step over just like this, okay? Put our butt right on the dock. And now what we're able to do is we're able to break everything down from our kayak. Remember, the same way we put the kayak in the water is the same way we want to take it out. What I do first thing is I'm going to take my pedal drive system out. Very simple, we're just going to click it over. We're going to pull the pedal drive system. We're going to set it aside, okay? Then we're going to move our way to the back of the kayak and we're going to take our, our nets off one or two at a time. Then we're also gonna look on the boat and see what else that we can take off that may be loose. So right now I have a loose bait cage and grab that. I can grab some gloves, anything that's loose, I think it's gonna fall out and grab my headlamp here. Now fishing game is already on the dock um, and they wanna check your boat. If you do have a short lobster on the boat, you're, you're pretty much done. You probably should have done that. But just say they're not on the boat, maybe they're in the parking lot. Um, perfect example, I'm gonna pick up my seat right now and as you can see, there's some loose light sticks. Well, we wanna get those out as well because that might possibly fall out through our scrubber hole in the center there. But we wanna make sure we peek, peek around and make sure that the boat is completely free of lobster. We wanna make sure to double check that, guys, because at the end of the night, like I said, when you're hooping these lobster, those small cracks that can fall between and they can hide in areas of kayak that you don't see at night. So make sure before you pull your boat out, you're free of gear and free of lobster. All right, guys, we got to the dock safely. We're ready to pull this kayak and put it on the dock safely. We've gone through the whole kayak. We've taken everything out. Now the kayak is dry for us to pull out safely. So let's demonstrate how to do that right now. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna unleash it from the cleat here. Whatever device you use, rope, I use the bungee. We're gonna spin the kayak around. We're gonna grab the front of it. We're just gonna walk backwards, guys, real slowly and we're gonna drop it. Make sure, guys, that the dock that you're on is a large dock. If we were pulling out on something small like this here, or like a dock that has very little space, we gotta remember that we have to know what's behind us because as you're pulling your kayak out, you can go into the drink, okay? So make sure you know as you're walking backwards what's behind you, okay? Okay, guys, we have our kayak on the dock. We have our net stacked. We're ready to put everything back on the truck and finish our night. Guys, if you have any questions about anything that you've seen here tonight, whether it's rigging or tackle or technique, please reach out to us at Promar Ahi USA or visit us at our YouTube channel where we have a slew of videos that our team has put together for you guys to make things easier for you on the water. But until then guys, we're at Pure Water Sports and Dana Point Jet Ski. Come visit us down here if you have any questions about kayaking, accessories, rigging, or if you want to buy a kayak yourself, we can do that for you. We also have a Pure Water Sports in Oceanside as well. Yes, in Oceanside. And there, you can also get all those accessories and all those kayaks for your needs to get on the water. <laughs>